Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Bell aka Sakui and welcome back to another Dev Diary Q&A for Aura History Untold. My friends, we are only weeks away here from launch, so be sure to go ahead and subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated for all of our latest trailers, Encarta episodes, and Dev Diary content. But in today's episode, we've got more exciting questions from you, the Aura History Untold amazing community. And joining us once again in the hot seat is our director of production, Satch Murray. So Satch, welcome back. Our brand new launch trailer just premiered at Gamescom. What has the reaction been like here so far? Hey, Steven, it's really excited to be back here. The trailer honestly looks phenomenal. The energy of the community has been really electric and the team's really inspired by all the feedback we're getting. Uh, there's just so much more to show in the game. Uh, we just can't wait for people to play the game on September 24th. For now, let's get into these questions. All right, well then, we have a lot of fans who are excited and hopefully we'll be able to provide them some answer. So our first question here comes then from PM Bartoli 919 on YouTube, who asks about the elimination at the end of an act. It seems the setting only allows you to disable it for human players. Can you disable it for AI players too? So yeah, we have a setting uh, that allows human nations to not be culled at act transitions. That means if you're not doing so well when act transition happens, you will be spared from getting called and you can still progress into act two and act three and see what the game has to offer. We really uh, were putting, we put this feature in since we really were trying to optimize our multiplayer experience. Uh, in traditional 4X games, there's a lot of downtime between turns. When you're playing with friends, you're just waiting for other people to take their turns. Uh, and if you are playing with your friends and you die, you just watch your friends play and enjoy while you sit around being checked out. So we wanted to add this setting to allow uh, maximum inclusivity and just spend, uh, have people spend as much time in the game as they can. So uh, we are just being a little more inclusive that way. So there's going to be some calling like that is something that happens, but it allows players from a multiplayer perspective to stick around so they can actually enjoy themselves. Right, and it also helps with balancing the game, making sure that you still have access to like key resources late game, but removing some nations. So it kind of works out, but maybe post-launch we can look into adding it for AI players too. The next question we have here comes from Christian Roca 1818 who writes, looking forward to it, question based on a different Q&A video. Will people revolt if you stop caring or maintaining them? Would be really cool if there were small and large scale revolts or revolutions. First and foremost, uh, Aura History Untold is about the people. Uh, other strategy games are maybe about combat or warfare, conquest, whatnot, but the main objective in our game, if there is one, is to take care of your people. And uh, as an immigrant myself, I've seen that people gravitate towards areas and places that give them a better life, or yeah. at least a promise of a better life. Uh, so just like similar to real life, in our game, if you aren't able to provide the services and the needs of your people, they will be unhappy, they will produce less, they will work less, they will uh, leave for greener pastures and uh, settle in enemy nations and enemy cities that can maybe provide those services. So take care of your people and just try to grow your economy that way instead of just trying to take over other people's thriving cities. All right, well, speaking of taking stuff over and growing more powerful, next up we have a question from Joro2024P9W, who asked, will there be rubber band mechanics for nations that are very far ahead, and are there downsides to large empires and excessive warmongering? Because, I mean, I guess we're getting to the snowball question at this point. What happens when you get so far ahead and take over everything? Sure, so if you are getting that far ahead, the AI will definitely be trying to target you and uh, teaming up and trying to see what they can do to slow you down. But we don't want to artificially slow down the players who are figuring out smart ways to get ahead. Uh, but downsides of warmongering, I mean, definitely if your nation is constantly at war and fighting other people, your people will become apathetic, your war variance will go high, that means you will be producing less and it will be harder and harder for you to make sure your people are happy. Um, also other nations will not like you and try to get you when you're, when you're weak. So definitely see if there are other options and collaboration is always an option that you can choose to go about progressing in our game. But downsides of larger empires are really if you have more population, you have uh, uh, to take care of them. You have to make sure they have enough services. But that's also an upside since 
when you have more population, you have more production, more research, you can outrun other nations and really just have a juggernaut economy. Oh, absolutely. That makes sense. Well, what happens, I guess, then if growth is too much? Because the next question we had here was from uh, Antonello Gone 2530 who asked a technical question of what about performance? There seems to be a lot of details in this game and I'm a little worried about it. So I, mean, I guess as things get bigger and bigger, what happens to the performance of the game? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of detail in our game, especially as you get into late game, you start seeing like modern cities and uh, skyscrapers. There's We've added like you can zoom in very close and zoom out extremely far to strategic views. And uh, I would be worried too, but we have a custom engine, the nitrous engine that is built to make Forex games like this and to build and create uh, and bring life to these living world simulations we have going on. So uh, we, I think we've done a pretty good job at uh, making sure the game runs on uh, a wide variety of hardware. Uh, just looking at our minimum spec, you can ha have the game run on kind of a budget build, if you may. But looking at our processor, you can use an AMD Ryzen 5 2400G or an Intel i5 5300 uh, or for your memory. 8 gigs of RAM is minimum, and for your graphics, uh, AMD Radeon 480 or NVIDIA GeForce 970. And you'll need about 50 gigs of uh, hard drive space on your machine. So you should be able to run your game on uh, your mid-spec mid machine. Uh, we also have a lot of other, uh, a lot of graphic settings. So if you can run the game on Ultra, you should be able to tweak the settings to your liking and make sure the game is running smooth from turn one, nothing but grass to like big skyscrapers and act three. Well, I mean, that's not bad then. That is definitely not bad. Okay, well, what happens then? I guess the next question comes from Julia Monstor 6264. Something that affects civilization is that at fast speeds, the era passes way too quickly. And with so many things to do, one often does not get to take advantage of special units, among other things. How will our work on that? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that for a lot of us who have played these types of games, that once you start snowballing and you start zooming through eras, you don't get to really experience them as much. Yeah, so I know in other games they have like a tech tree and a uh, system where the world just kind of takes you along as they move and the world moves together. In our game, we've done something kind of, I think, novel. Our tech system is pretty unique where we have a deck system for each era. So the players get to choose if they want to collect all the technologies or leave some behind and move to the next era. So there's trade-offs there where you can choose be uh, between what you have now in the current era or uh, just gamble it all and see uh, if you have a chance to start collecting technologies for an era that's coming in, in the next era. There's no really wrong answer here. The players can decide how slow or fast they want to move. And if you do decide to skip an era, you can replay the game and see what you missed. Dang, okay. Well, next up then, we have a multiplayer question from... Pmiscent, who says, could it be possible for multiplayer if one player died because of conquest, they could rejoin as a new country? Yes, we, you should be able to join again as a AI nation that hasn't died yet. Again, like the game is about in inclusivity. We want the players to be playing the game and enjoying it as much as they can, especially in multiplayer. We don't want you to be the one person who is culled or dead and sitting around watching your friends have the fun. You should be able to join back again and see if you can uh, have a better, better luck and maybe get some revenge on your friends who killed you. All right, good to know. When I spawn in the desert and mountains with nothing else around me, I can just last painfully until I can jump into the next thing. It'll get better. Same yep. game. It's fine. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, the next question on here comes from Marcus Wald, 3614 on YouTube, who writes, what about different game speeds? Is there a marathon mode? For launch, we will just have one game speed setting, but we will love to update that in the post-launch uh, expansion. But we do offer variable max turns and uh, turn limits. So you'll be able to configure how long your games will last. They can go from like 500 turns to 1250 turns. And uh, it, depending on the choices you pick, each act will sort of be a equal half of the game so you should be in a 750 turn game uh be able to get to act two in around 150 to 200 turns and to act three by around 500 turns 
that actually is impressive when it comes to balancing here for like for people who would just normally zoom through things and not actually get to experience it. Yeah, I mean, if you want to zoom through things, you can also do that. Like you can play it for a shorter term, depending because I know a lot of people just want to get through a game quickly. And I personally prefer to just have like one long game going with like Max Nations, large map and just come back to some, have something to come back to. You know, yeah, that is always me. I totally understand yeah. that. All right, well, then the final comment that we have here for today comes from mstorm1725 on a previous Q&A video who says, this game continues to impress. The combat looks almost like Total War. Hopefully there will be some dev gameplay stream soon. We're glad you're impressed with our combat. Uh, the Total War series was definitely one of our inspirations for how the uh, visuals for combat should look. We really wanted to emphasize the grand scale, but also emphasize the human toll these massive battles could take. Battles are not just a strategic event. It's costly in terms of human lives. So uh, we didn't think that representing it, soldiers in a uh, kind of an abstract way would do justice to the sacrifices made. We really wanted to ensure that our in our game you feel the gravity of every battle and knowing that each one is expensive and it takes significant uh, toll on your population. Uh, and it, but... As for gameplay streams, uh, stay tuned. We've got some exciting plans coming your way. Thank you once again for joining us here, Sash. Is there anything you'd like to say to the fans before it is that you got to go? Yeah, I just want to say thank you, Stephen. And uh, I want to say thank you to all of our fans. The entire team is incredibly excited about the game coming out. We've poured so much love and passion into our history untold. It's really been a true labor of love and a dream project for us to bring a modern take on the Forex genre. I just want to also add that this is just the beginning. The game is coming out on September 24th, but we've got tons of content planned for post-launch and our roadmap looks fantastic. Uh, your support means everything to us and uh, we're thrilled to have you on this journey with us. That is awesome. And thank you to all of you who have been watching. Subscribe for future content coming to this channel. Follow us on the social platforms of your choice. And don't forget to wishlist our History Untold on Steam before, as Sash just said, it releases on September 24th, 2024. Thank you, all of you, once again. And we'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.